So here we are. We're HPEP. Um, these are the online parent sessions. I am your facilitator and parent coach. So just real briefly, I wanted to go over the session schedule. So they're all going to be, um, well, actually, this all of them are going to be at noon Hawaii time. Um, so this week, obviously, is building confidence. And then we have communication on the 9th, cooperation on the 16th, setting limits on the 23rd, right before Thanksgiving, um, solving problems. I put that one in red because I realized that um, Chicago, we actually are on daylight savings, so we change time. So I will then, it will then be 4 p.m. for me. Right now it's 5 p.m. We're five hours. We're going to be four hours. And I have a afternoon meeting that day on the 30th. So I think I can make it, but I just put that out there because maybe we um, can kind of take a poll as maybe we might be able to change the time um, on that particular day, the 30th. Um, but I will see if I can rearrange my schedule first. I just wanted to give everyone notice of that. Um, and then friendship skills on the 7th. So hopefully, Christy, our one and only, you can join us for most of these or all of these. Um, so kind of what to expect just from the sessions. I went through and read everyone's um, kind of what they wanted an ideal session. And I think that it actually fits pretty well with um, hopefully what was presented in the last cohort. So definitely a place and a space of no judgment. I mean, that's something that I have to practice in my job every day. Um, I mean, working with teachers and classrooms um, that are just stressful and challenging. And, you know, I really, really try my hardest um, not to judge any teacher or any parent because we're all doing the best that we can. Um, so this is definitely a place for no judgment. So I hope that, you know, everyone involved can kind of practice that. Um, I'm definitely open to questions and comments and discussion. I love to troubleshoot and kind of give ideas to specific problems. Um, I did want to just mention that, you know, the information that's presented is research-based. I mean, not just the home-based component that comes from um, the First Step program, but also a lot of the other videos. Um, I kind of share things from different curricula that I've really learned a lot about, especially since moving to Chicago, I've done a lot of different trainings um, and it's all based on um, research. And I'm totally happy to share those resources. Um, I'm kind of a nerd and I'm really into <laughs> research. So I know some people are not. So I understand if you don't, you don't really wanna know the background information, but if you do, please let me know. I can get you that information. Um, and, you know, just sharing that I'm not an expert on your child, your children, or your family. <laughs> Trust me, you are. You know much more about your particular child and family's dynamic and situation than I do. So I don't want you to, um, you know, if I say something that doesn't jive with maybe how things work in your family or work with your kids, then please just let me know. We can talk about it um, and troubleshoot for what's best for you and your situation because it's, it's definitely not about me. Um, and then take what works for you and kind of leave the rest. So I think it's important to note, you know, again, that same idea of what works for your family, what works for your schedule, what works for your stress level. Um, what do you know you can try? Um, what do you think doesn't just doesn't work for you or work for you and your partner? Then just let it go. So I hope that this is a place that, you know, we can all learn about each other and kind of take what is uh, best for all of us and move forward. So we're going to talk about building confidence today. This is actually um, was presented as the last parent session um, when we used to do these with uh, home base when we were doing the, the program several years ago. Um, so I guess just real quickly, the, the curriculum comes from First Step to Success, um, which is I think is still around. I don't know. Know me? You could tell me. Um, it's um, a program that was created out of the University of Oregon, and it had a classroom component and a parent component. So we kind of took with us um, through HPEP, and then now into as HPEP is evolving, we're just the um, the basic curriculum and kind of adding pieces to it. Um, but this was the parent curriculum component. It's called Home Base, um, and so the, that's where all these lessons kind of come from and originated the six lessons. Um, so you'll kind of see those 
icons and little emblems on the cards and things. And the cards that we're presenting are from that home base um, program along with that curriculum. So again, that's called First Step to Success. Um, and I'd just like to start kind of with a quote. Um, so that top one, every child needs one person who's crazy about them. Um, I just love this quote. I think that it's just resonates with everyone. I think we can all think of those people in our lives who have been the person who's crazy about us. Um, you know, whether that's a parent or a teacher or an auntie or, you know, a friend's parent or someone um, who has kind of really been our champion throughout our life, or it may be just a critical time in our life, you know, and those people are really memorable. And they usually bring out the best in us and they make us feel like, you know, we can do our best. So I think it's important to, especially in the building confidence lesson, to kind of think about those people and who those people are for you. And, you know, I think it's wonderful when that person happens to be a parent or a, rel a close relative, but sometimes that, that's just not that person, you know, that's just not how life has played out. And you know who that, um, that important person is for you. And the second one, um, a baby does not exist. It is always a baby and someone. So this is kind of recent from um, a more recent training that I have received here in Chicago. And I don't actually know who said this, but I remember we had a discussion about it in the training. And I think that's also just a really wonderful quote, um, thinking about that. And, you know, our kids, when they're from zero to five, um, that's, the age of kids that I work with, but of course, you know, just around those ages, you know, they really aren't alone. I mean, they can't be, they can't survive. So there, there is always a baby and someone. So I think that, you know, if you're, and you are as a parent, that someone for that baby, um, then that's kind of gives you a really, I want you to feel like you're in a really powerful position to make positive change and to make um, change and try new things as a parent um, because you're definitely anchored to that baby. So this is from the uh, home base curriculum and it's in your paperwork that was, I sent the um, email yesterday with the links in it. Again, I said, you know, I know I realized it was just yesterday. So if you didn't have time to look through it, then it's no problem. Um, but it is in, you do have access to these papers, so I just kind of wanted to let you know that. So I'm getting my papers out, sorry. So in checkup A, it's just kind of some questions to really think about and ponder. Um, and it's called messages from the past, which sounds kind of creepy, but it's, I don't think it's meant to sound like that. But it's really, um, you know, I think it is something important to think about that, parents build children's beliefs about who they are and what they can do in life. So kind of taking a minute to, you know, close your eyes or just take a breath and think about the messages that your parents gave you about yourself um, when you were growing up. And I think, again, even if you don't have the paper in front of you, just kind of imagining that right now and thinking about it. Um, maybe thinking of a few adjectives that kind of describe um, those messages. And then I think just kind of reflecting on, you know, whether that was a positive experience or a negative experience, you know, and unfortunately, many people have negative experiences with that. So what were the messages that my, you know, their parents gave them um, growing up, maybe weren't very great, and weren't very positive and weren't very encouraging. Um, and those are definitely something that we carry with us for sure. So how many of these messages kind of still influence your self confidence and how you think about yourself? Um, and how many are positive. And sometimes those are things that maybe we haven't thought about at all or really um, questioned. And I think that that's really, I think it's good to start with this exercise because it's really the first step in recognizing how we're communicating self-confidence um, to our own kids. And that's true for teachers as well. So teachers working in the classroom, you know, how are we communicating those things about who we are um, to the kids that we're in contact with. And it often has to do with 
how we feel about ourselves and you know kind of where those messages originated and then finally are there certain qualities that you'd like to see your child develop so this is kind of like a wish list of what are those things that i want to see my child have and they could be things that you know your parents gave you like oh you know my parents were just so encouraging of me um, to pursue my passion in art or to pursue my um, athleticism you know maybe those are things that your parents were really rooting for you and that was you know a confidence builder and something really positive in your life so maybe that's something you want to also build in your child or um, you know maybe this is the opposite and you're thinking you know my parents were never supportive of me doing things that I was passionate about and that's definitely something I want to do for my child um, so just kind of thinking about what is that list of things that you'd like to instill in your child. Some examples that they gave are, um, you know, competence. I don't know if I like that one. Care for others, respect for the environment, um, you know, uh, community, respect for elders, family, you know, and what are these values that you want to instill um, in your kids? And maybe, you know, I'm sure you're already doing that. But I think sometimes it's it's interesting to label them and you know kind of put words to the desires and thoughts that we have for our kids. So the time to start building your child's self confidence is now. If you want your child to enjoy life, have a positive attitude, then kind of delivering these daily um, positive messages. And this is really what all what HF is about: is noticing what's going right, um, noticing what we want to. Um, have in our families and in our kids instead of noticing kind of what we don't want. Um, so thinking of positive me messages um, you do give or would like to offer your child each day and kind of just writing down a few of them. Again, this is in your packet. So if you um, wanted to do this later, sometimes I think this is something good to do with your partner. You know, if you are living with your partner and they're in the same house, um, that this is just a good exercise to talk about together, talk about what are the things we want to build um, in our children. So I think some of those, when we think about those positive messages that we're trying to send um, daily to our kids, kind of noticing what's going right, noticing what we want, um, noticing the behaviors that we, uh, that we like to see, instead of kind of always providing directives or, or correction. I think it's it's very natural um, and very common to kind of provide a lot of directives and correction. What I mean by that is directives are, it's not necessarily, correction is kind of a, we all kind of know what that means. You know, don't do this, stop that, stop hitting. Um, that's kind of, you know, providing that um, kind of reprimand. But a directive is more like a command, not necessarily in a negative tone, but just, um, sit here, do this, put this away, you know, so you're not reprimanding, you're not noticing a negative behavior and, and calling um, attention to it, but you aren't, there's also no kind of joy in it. You know, it's, it's definitely more of the type of communication that gives adults a lot of control in an environment as opposed to providing, you know, some choices and some interaction and some back and forth between adult and child as opposed to, um, you know, just providing a lot of direction all the time, all day long. And direction's okay sometimes, of course, um, but I think kind of noticing those positive things and what we want to be happening is definitely more important. So just some examples of making those specific and descriptive statements. Um, so in definitely more than good job. Um, one of the coaches that we worked with was like challenging her teachers to use other terms than good job. Um, and I think that's, again, I think that's maybe more of a teacher thing. I mean, I'm sure parents say it too, but teachers, oh my goodness, they like beat the dead horse with the good job, trust me. Um, so just kind of thinking of, of more descriptive ways to uh, tell your child what you like about what they did. So I love the way you played with your sister today. You decided to share your toys with her. So kind of being excited, you know, bringing that excited energy um, and communicating to your child what you that you did like what they did and describing specifically what you liked. So I liked that you shared your toys. I noticed you listened to your dad when he asked you to get dressed. He, ha he only had to ask you one time, thank you. So again, you're kind of reiterating that behavior that you would like to see. You want to be able to ask your child to do something and they do it the first time. 
you want your child to be able to share with their sibling. Um, and so you're kind of bringing that positive energy and noticing when they do it. You're waiting so patiently for me to check out, you know, if you're at the store, you know, thank you for being quiet. So what are those moments during your day um, when your child is doing the right thing and doing kind of what um, you would expect of them or what is they're on task um, and making sure that you notice those things more often than you're noticing or talking about the things that you don't want. So then check up B again, this is in your packet. Um, so encouragement at home provides a supportive base for your child. So it kind of gives your child this sense of safety, this sense of this feeling of being connected to you in a positive way. I know that if I, um, you know, if I am playing and sharing toys that, you know, mom or dad's going to notice me positively or, or, you know, the other adults in the household that they're going to be happy about me um, playing nicely or they're going to, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get some type of connection from that. Um, so I think I hear a lot um, from teachers and I know from other parents that I've worked with is this word of like, he or she needs a lot of attention. They need attention. They want attention. Um, and I think I really, I really like shifting that um, idea to connection. So your child is trying to connect with you. You know, they really, you're their person. You know, they want to connect with you at any opportunity that they can. And they're going to kind of get that connection. Um, they will get it. So it's just a matter of how are they going to get it. And I think when you're providing more of that connection um, for things that you want and the positive things that are happening, you're going to get more of that as opposed to um, providing that your energy and your attention towards something um, that's maybe not going right. So just kind of list three encouraging statements you might say to your child. What are some things that you notice that you can think of right now during the day um, that he or she, you know, has an easy time with. So you know that, she, that you never have to remind them to, I don't know, brush your teeth, or you never have to remind them to help brother or sister with breakfast or whatever it is, you know, the things that they're, they're capable of doing and that they do well. And just kind of thinking in your own mind, you know, do I notice them when they're doing that? I know that, you know, my daughter knows how to put her shoes on. Do I notice her? Um, do I kind of provide a moment of connection and joy and happiness about this behavior or, you know, something that she's doing that I know is the right thing? And if you're not, that's fine. That's no problem. Start now. Start tomorrow. Start today. You know, just kind of be a little bit more aware of those moments and those opportunities that you can provide something um, positive to say. And then, you know, the second question just kind of goes back to what we had talked about before, which is how much encouragement did you receive when you were growing up? How much of these, how much of this positive interaction and this positive um, acknowledgement did you receive yourself? Um, and if it's not so much, you know, that might be why it's difficult or kind of not intuitive for you to kind of do it with your own child because it just, it wasn't done to you. It's not something natural um, and that's fine. And that's common, common. I would honestly say more common than not that you maybe didn't receive this kind of positive um, interaction with a parent. It doesn't mean your parent was mean or, you know, terrible or anything. It's just maybe wasn't something they noticed. And then checking the methods of encouragement that were used in your home when you were growing up. So were you able to participate in, activities with your parent? You know, did you get compliments? Did they hug and um, provide, you know, positive physical touch? You know, was there small rewards? Did you get an allowance? Did you get a special treat? Or did you kind of get nothing most of the time? You know, if you were behaving well, did you kind of get get nothing for that? Um, or maybe it was a it was an environment where you really needed to behave well, because there were consequences if you didn't. So just kind of thinking about that and what the interactions were like in your house. And then how much encouragement is a part of your parenting? So, you know, just kind of thinking about that. And I think this is also another great thing to discuss with a partner. Um, you know, if you're still with your partner and they live with you or you have a good relationship, you know, I think talking about these things is just really important and thinking about how is that different? How is the type of encouragement I receive different than my partners? Does that, does that kind of explain a little bit about the different ways that we interact with our child? You know, is he or she much more comfortable providing this positive um, 
interaction or is it the reverse? You know, I mean, everyone's different and everyone's kind of, you and your partner are kind of balancing how you interact with, with um, your own kids or maybe you're the same. Um, maybe this is something that's not a challenge for you, but I think in at least in some relationships for sure, it is a challenge, the different ways that we interact um, with our kids. And then what type of encouragement do you give your child? So do you participate in their activities? Do you provide compliments, you know, um, positive physical touch, you know, occasional small rewards, special treats, nothing other. Um, so there's all different kinds of ways to be connected. So this is just kind of a short, a short list. And then just thinking about, I think this is more of the self-reflective piece. Why is it difficult for me to be encouraging sometimes? If it is, you know, if it is difficult for you, why, why might that be? Um, because, you know, sometimes providing that positive encouragement is being a little bit vulnerable. You know, we're having to share um, something with our child and we want them to have a positive response. And definitely with, I mean, I work with a lot of kids who have a lot of behavior issues. So sometimes sharing something positive with a child who has some difficult social emotional, has some lacking social emotional skills can be vulnerable because you don't know how they might react and you want them to react positively. So sometimes that can be hard. So this is kind of a more of just um, what we've talked about. So providing that daily confidence building messages. Um, and that really kind of starts with thinking about um, why that might be hard for you, if it is something that's hard for you. And then exploring that and talking it through and, you know, starting to kind of notice the things that are happening that are that are going right. So at the bottom there, there's those bullet points. Um, emphasizing the positive. Being sincere. Trust me, children can tell when you're faking it. And I don't, I mean, I think there is some fake, fake it till you make it to this. Um, you know, if it's not something you're comfortable with, I would encourage you to fake it till you make it. Um, but try to find, I mean, I know every parent loves their child to death. So I know you can think of one or two things during the day that are sincerely positive, you know, and focusing on those. Um, allowing your child to show others what they know well. So kind of, you know, letting others know what it is that your child does well. Um, if they're good, you know, if they're very artistic, then drawing pictures for other people in the family and talking about them. Um, if they're... I don't know if they're really great with younger kids or babies, you know, having them kind of get together with family or friends and kind of care for the, the younger ones or talk about how well they're, how good they are at that. You know, I think it even just talking to others about the things that we like about our kids, they hear that and they can kind of connect with that. Um, letting your child help. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute with some of the cards, but I think sometimes that's hard for parents, um, some parents, you know, to let your child get involved in things because it can make that activity um, maybe more difficult or maybe last a little bit longer. For example, do I want to help let my child help me fold laundry? Um, if your child is three, four, five, they probably have no idea how to fold laundry. So that means there's not going to be a whole lot of folding going on. But what you're doing in that moment, in those 10, 20 minutes, and trust me, they'll get bored after 10, 20 minutes, of allowing them to help you fold laundry is you're building their confidence. You're building your positive connection with them. They're feeling like, oh, look, mom and dad trusts me to do this job with them. I get to do this adult job. You know, so exciting, <laughs> folding laundry. But I think you know this pretty well, is that any kid wants to help their, their parent around the house. So you can help me dry the dishes. Maybe that means, again, that will take longer than it would if you did it yourself. You're right. Um, but allowing that kind of shared moment reaps further benefits. And that's kind of what I mean, meant about, you know, a few minutes ago talking about the difference between those reprimands and those directives, that's a very adult controlled environment. So that means, nope, I'm gonna do this because I know I can do it in 10 minutes versus allowing a little bit more back and forth and a little bit more openness with your child so that they can help you. And then, you know, in the consequence of that is they're building a positive connection and you're gonna get further down the line when we talk further into different lessons Building that positive connection, I mean, not only is that a wonderful thing for your child and building their self-confidence and who they are, but also provides you with more compliance because they have a relationship. They have a positive relationship. So when you ask them to do something, they're more likely to do it. 
than if you have a kind of difficult power struggling relationship. Um, so allowing your child to make a choice, even in those difficult moments, even though we want again as an adult, as a parent, as a teacher to say, no, that you're doing this because I said so. You know, I've definitely heard my parents say that growing up. Um, and even if that's something that, you know, you say now to your child, again, it's, it's not the worst thing ever. I mean, go ahead. If that's something that, you know, you find comfort in, that's something that you um, want to practice. But I would really encourage you to kind of provide a choice in that moment because you're probably going to get a little bit of a power struggle in the other direction. Um, but providing a choice of, okay, I need you to clean up your toys. Do you want to pick up the trucks first or do you want to pick up the crayons first? So even just giving that little bit of a choice can, prov can get you out of a power struggle. Asking your child's opinion. Again, this is kind of controlled by you somewhat. You can't just say, what do you want to eat for dinner? And every day they say McDonald's you know, what we're my, I'm thinking we're going to have chicken or we're going to have um, pork tonight or whatever, you know, what, what do you want to eat? But, you know, if it's, some, if it's either way to you, um, providing them with that choice, again, gives them this feeling of like, wow, mom or dad really trusts me. Mom or dad thinks that my opinion is important. So that only builds their confidence and allowing them to try, which means they're not going to do everything well which means they might get messy, which means, you know, sometimes they might get, they might fall down and bruise their knee or something like that. Some minor, you know, incident could happen, um, but allowing them to try and kind of learn from those things, um, again, shows that you trust them and that only builds their confidence. So there is a box um, in those sheets, again, called the do's and don'ts. So I like this because it's just kind of a quick reference um, of, you know, things to try and maybe things to avoid. Um, so providing that positive feedback daily as much as you can, offer opportunities to try new things, make time to connect with your child, even just five, 10 minutes. I mean, it doesn't seem like that long. And I know we're so busy, um, but you know, just that five, 10 minutes before bed um, or that five minutes before you, when you pick them up from daycare or preschool um, to have a kind of a connected conversation. Don't compare your children to other to other kids or even to their siblings. That just can be really hurtful. Um, and that kind of, it's like an adult. It's like us as adults comparing ourselves to other people. You know, it doesn't feel very good when it looks like everyone else is doing better than you and you, you feel like you don't know how to do better. Um, so it kind of has the same feeling for your child. Um, using sarcasm with positive verbal feedback. What I mean is, you know, saying something like, Hmm. like, oh, great job. You know, we mean it, I think as an adult, we say that sarcastically, like, oh, they dropped something on the floor. Great. Um, you know, a child doesn't understand the age from zero to five really does not understand sarcasm. So it's kind of confusing message to feel like, to have a feeling of being kind of a negative feeling because they can feel your energy of that. But at the same time, it's a positive word. So kind of just as much as you can, avoiding sarcasm and being more direct um, with how you're complimenting them or how you're kind of directing them. And then don't take over your child's activities. So I think this is also something that can be difficult for parents and teachers alike, adults just in general. Again, your child is coloring like crazy all over the paper and not making it look pretty or they're like again folding the laundry like crazy and it's not where it's really not happening um but just kind of letting them do that and you being okay in that moment to let them do that and not taking it over and say nope do it this way um, and we'll talk about a scenario about that in a minute okay we're getting to our scenarios I wanted to, this is from Positive Solutions for Families. It's also something Googleable if you wanted to Google it. It's part of the CSEFL website. That's C-S-E-F-E-L. Um, but they talk about um, just similar things, positive connections with families um, between parents and kids. And so these are some scenarios that came out of this, this training. So I'm going to read you a couple um, scenarios and just kind of thinking as I'm reading them, thinking about the differences between them. So this is the first one. 1A. So Dan is sitting on the couch watching television. Max is sitting in front of him playing with Legos. 
Max makes a Lego structure and holds it up to his dad and says, look, not looking at Max, but looking around Max to see the television. Dad says, that's nice. Max puts the structure closer in front of his face. Dad, you didn't see it. Look, this part moves fast. Look, look. Dad looks over briefly. I see it. Now let me finish watching this show. Why don't you go play over there by the table? Max looks sad and moves his things over to the table. So that's scenario one. You can picture it. I'm sure that's never, ever happened in your house ever. <laughs> I'm joking. This is the second scenario. Okay. So dad turns off the TV and moves over to Max, joining him on the floor. He watches him. Dad says, Max, that's really cool. What's that going to be? He looks at him and waits for a response. Max says, it is a super fast airplane. It can go faster than Superman. Dad says, faster than Superman, huh? I'd say that's pretty fast. I like the colors too. Blue is my favorite color. Max says, mine too, but I like red, yellow, and white. Dad says, can I build something? Max says, yes, you can build an airport. Dad says, an airport? Well, I think I'll need some help. Where should I put it? Max points, hmm, over there. And you can use these blocks. He hands them some blocks. Dad smiles and says, thank you. That's a very nice for you to share your blocks with me. So in the first interaction, again, I want to kind of point out how the, I mean, these scenes sound pretty different, but I think the way it plays out in real life every day, it's very normal to, do, to be in scene one. It's very normal to be, I mean, we're tired, we're busy, or we're trying to watch our favorite TV show and your child's shoving their toy in, in your face. Um, you know, and your response is kind of, eh, go play over there, please. And again, if you do this every once in a while, it's totally fine. Um, your child will not be damaged. It's totally fine to, you know, every once in a while be like, okay, I, I need some time right now. You need to go play over here. It's totally fine. But I think to think about this interaction being more normal than, you know, more happening more often than not. So the interaction where dad's getting down on the floor, he's waiting for the child to, to give a response. He's interacting, he's playing, he's letting the child take the lead. So the child says, oh, I'm building an airplane. And dad says, okay, I'm going to build an airport. You know, so instead of kind of taking over the activity, he really lets his child lead him through the play. And then scene two, so this is just another scenario. This is the first one. So Kenny and his mom are playing with blocks and the animals on the floor. Kenny picks up a snake and says, roar. Mom says, that's a snake, not a lion. What does the snake say? Kenny says, my snake roars. See, roar. Mom says, no, that isn't right. A snake says, hiss, not roar, a lion roars. Here's a lion for you to play with. She picks up a lion and puts it in his hand, taking the snake away. Kenny makes the lion walk and says, roar, this time with less enthusiasm. Mom says, that's right, son, you got it. Do you know what a lion's baby is called? Kenny guesses, baby? Mom says, no, they're called cubs, lion cubs. How many lions do you have? Kenny, he has four. He counts one, two, three. Mom says, no, you missed one. Let's count again. She takes Kenny's hand and touches each lion with it. One, two, three, four. How many lions are there? Kenny says, four. Mom, you be the lion's daddy. Kenny hands her a large tiger. Mom says, this isn't a lion, Kenny. What is this? Kenny says, it's the lion's daddy. Mom says, no, this is a tiger. What color is the tiger? Kenny says, Kenny keeps playing and doesn't answer. He turns away and keeps playing on his own. Mom says, what color is it? Kenny says, black and yellow. Mom says, no, Kenny, it's orange and black. See, she holds the tiger up to him. He puts down the toys he's playing with and begins kicking and throwing toys. Mom says, all right, young man, you're done playing. This is scene two. They're playing on the floor with the wild animals and blocks. Kenny picks up a lion and makes it walk on the blocks. Oh, mom says, you have a lion. That's a big lion. It is a daddy lion because it has a mane. Kenny picks up the lion and looks at it. A mane. He points to the lion's mane. That makes the lion go fast. Mom says, oh, that lion is moving really fast. He's running. I wonder why he's moving so fast. 
Kenny says, he's trying to go to his friend's house. Kenny moves the lion next to the polar bear. Mom says, oh, is the polar bear the lion's friend? Kenny says, yes, the snake is the, his friend too. Remember the snake that roars? Roar. Mom says, yes, I do remember the snake that roars. Kenny, his friend, friend the lion taught him how to roar. Mom says, wow, he must be a pretty special friend for the lion to teach him how to roar. Look, I see one, two, three snakes. Did the lion teach them to roar too? So again, in the first one, we heard, what did we hear from mom? We heard a lot of correction, a lot of, and again, I want to point out this mom is well-intentioned. She's trying to tell him, no, there's four, there's not three. No, it's orange, it's not yellow. No, a lion can't, you know, a snake can't roar. So, I mean, she's trying to provide, um, her attentions are good. She wants her child to learn these things. But I think shifting your focus a little bit when you're in those moments to this is more about the connection. This is more about me connecting right now. In this photo, this is more about me connecting right now than telling my child the correct answer or teaching them, you know, to focus that playtime more on the connection. Again, it's more child directed. So the child's saying that a snake is roaring and mom's going with it. Like, oh yeah, that's a snake that roars. And that's totally fine. Your child will learn these things in, in school. I promise they won't grow up thinking snakes roar, you know, but it's that moment that's more important in that situation. So just thinking about making those connecting moments, uh, those that playtime looking more like scenario B than scenario A in both of those instances. So the parent act tip and activity cards, here these uh, this is again a part of the one of the links i provided you the link that you click on will not look like this it won't be that four to a sheet i think i believe it's one to a sheet um but i just put the four it's a, we can kind of see multiple ones at once um so there's in the this series of cards there's tips and then activities so the tips are at the beginning um, and they really just talk, they kind of just reiterate the things that we talked about in the lesson. Um, so uh, you can see right there. So all the skills you've worked on with your child have helped build self-confidence. Um, you know, these, the, the tip cards will help you and your child keep, you and your child practicing and trying out new positive behaviors. Um, so in this one, this fourth one, help your child feel useful and important by asking his or her opinion. So we kind of talked about that. Think of ways you can ask your child opinion to, um, and write them on the, the lines provided. So you can kind of think about, and again, just thinking through your normal daily routine. What are some opportunities I can ask for his or her opinion? And then just provide, um, taking time each day to notice your child's positive qualities, comment on what they said, did, or tried to do. Um, ask your child if he or she wants to help you do something that you like to do. So, you know, some of the activities that they suggest there are like repairing a car. So I think, again, we sometimes think these adult activities that we're doing, like, oh, they can't help us with this, but I'm sure you can think of something they could do. So again, your child can hold a tool or they can, um, you know, if you're into baking, your child can mix something or pour, pour something in, you know, I mean, they don't have to obviously do um, the things that the adults need to do, but you can think of some way they can help. And I'm telling you, they will love it. So if this isn't something you normally do, or like you don't really allow them to help with a lot of things, they will absolutely love it. And then the activity card just kind of give you some ideas of activities to do. Again, I mean, I want to let you know, some of them are kind of weird. So if, if it's not for you, if it's not something you would try, then just don't try it or just, you know, mo uh, modify it to something that you would do or would try. Um, so the compliment game, flipping a coin to see who goes first, make up a compliment about someone you both know. Um, I think that's, you know, a good a good way to kind of think about that word compliment. Maybe they don't know that and talking about that um, and then practicing giving people compliments, you know, whether that's teachers or peers. Um, make up a compliment about each other. Labeling the behavior, I think that's something definitely um, important to keep in mind. Ask your child to help plan dinner. Giving them those choices, you know, those choices that you're willing to allow them to choose. 
And then just, or maybe just playing a game with them and thinking about ways that you can notice what they're doing positively. Practicing new things, trying new things, um, asking them what they might want to do, inviting your child to go for a ride or a walk, walk the dog, um, just the two of you. So having that special time. I think that's also really important if you have um, several kids at home to have special time with each one of them. Um, you know, even if that's 10 minutes a day. And then building their wish list of maybe different things, different games they might want to try with you and play with you. Leaving those love notes. So this last one. So leaving a surprise, I like you, I love you note. Um, writing a note with a smiley face, putting it in their lunch, putting it on there. You know, you know where they're going to go get their socks ready or whatever, wherever they're traveling around the house, leaving them that little note that says that you love them or, you know, putting a sticker on the note or, or whatever, you know, these kind of special tiny little things really do, you know, are memorable for them. So those are, again, that's from the link um, on those, the parent tip and activity cards. I think I listed it as like building confidence cards. And then for homework, so for next week, um, when we check in at the beginning, um, we'll just talk a little bit about um, what happened this week. So when you're thinking and, um, and talking and debriefing about the ways that you were parented, um, I think, you know, that's just really important. So do that with either a sibling, a partner, a friend, um, whomever, maybe you haven't talked about this with your partner, who knows? Um, maybe you haven't told, um, a whole lot of people in your life, maybe about how that your parent relationship really affected you. Um, and we tend to parent the way we were parented. Some, sometimes not, you know, sometimes we do the opposite because it was not a good experience. But I think in those moments of stress, um, we do tend to parent the way that we were parented. Um, and we, I see that with teachers all the time. I think teachers tend to teach kids the way they were parented, especially these young kids. Um, it's, it's very different than being a teacher of an older child and having a specific curriculum to follow. Um, so I think sometimes those interactions come out when we're stressed out um, and we're unbalanced. So just thinking about what is that? What was that interaction for me? Writing down three ways you can positively notice your child this week. So putting it on your fridge to remind yourself. This is something I used to do when I was doing like live in-person parent sessions, just giving parents a magnet. Um, you can do that with a post-it. I mean, my gosh, it's so easy. You can put it in your phone. Um, just three things, just thinking of three things throughout the day um, that you normally don't, maybe don't notice that you know your child's doing um, and does well and that you can positively notice them and being specific about that noticing. So I really like the way that you do X, um, not like good job but being kind of specific with um, what it is that you, you're you liking. Practice a few of the activity cards, pre-plan some time to use them, thinking about when can I carve out those five, 10 minutes, my driving, I mean, I know Hawaii, I know traffic is insane. So if you're sitting in traffic, um, thinking of some creative things you can talk about. And so what are some of those activities you might be able to do at that time? Um, and then planning that one-on-one -on -one kind of connection time with your child. This could be especially special if you have more than one child, um, but and just playing with them, letting them take the lead, um, acting like you are a peer for five or 10 minutes a day um, is makes them feel really connected and just really special. Like mom wants to have, mom wants to play with me, dad wants to play with me. So again, just going back to, you know, there is no baby, there is a baby and someone, and you are that someone. Um, so you have a lot of, you just have a lot of power in your child's life. And I hope that, um, hope that you feel that way and hope that you feel like you can bring some positive, um, happy energy to that connection.